cost of uh, energy storage and the value of your local solar project. Um, of all of the um, qualified um, solar installers in the state on our website, revermont.org backslash rebel um, to Vermont Renewable Energy Business Listing. And you can sort through all of the, um, there are 82 um, solar companies in the state. And um, just under half of them provide <laughs> services specifically for towns and schools um, and specify. I know we've got quite a few here. Uh, you'll hear from Chad from Encore. I see Catamount, Nord Solar, um, Aegis, Sun Common, many Green, folks. Green Lantern. Green, Lantern um, Green Mount Solar. Uh, following the Obama administration coming in and have our customers, which are often municipalities and other institutions, you know, understand that on Friday we've been going at the this is such an important report the day after Thanksgiving when everybody's out and pulling them and, and trying to understand what they're all about. We do, um, representing municipalities and other organizations, I just wanted to show sort of a, an outline, uh, a, a chart showing the different parties and the roles and the benefits within each of those uh, entities. Um, so, you know, this is what we are. We're the developer and sometimes we're the owner. So sometimes those two are one the same. And then the local community and sometimes the property owner as well. And I, that's what we're talking about here today is how can local communities contribute or participate in this segment of the economy? Well, they can sometimes do that by you know, allowing municipal property that's not otherwise being developed to be a host site for a project like this. And then, you know, as Olivia had mentioned, um, these are tax advantage investments that the private sector has created financial subscription as well. You know, they may be agricultural land that's not wetland, but is not great for farming, or maybe it's a little rocky. Um, there's all kinds of you know, underutilized property that can be brought to bear to for the um, deployment of solar. Um, certainly, um, you know, a municipality can support environmental and climate goals through a hosting project such as this. Um, and if this, if the municipality serves as the net metering credit uh, off taker or the power purchase agreement off taker, um, you know, that provides an, uh, you know an ability to secure some savings as compared to um, status quo over the long term. So it serves as a hedge, right? You may not put all of your eggs in this basket with respect to the solar project, but a, a portion of it, um, you know, could be addressed. And you'll save some money, and that, that serves as a good hedge. Um, and again, I think it was the point was made earlier that this is all at no cost to the community. Right, so in the metering customer. A, la a slightly larger project, um, you know, Vermont utilities um, are faced with um, compliance payments if they don't meet uh, escalating renewable energy standard requirements. Um, so they are motivated, and they have been motivated, um, to enter into bilateral power purchase agreement projects to secure that power. And with the larger scale projects, we can deliver the kilowatt hours at a lower price point as compared to net metering. Um, so that, that has been another opportunity, but I'll also speak to that being a challenge on the next slide. Um, green tariffs are um, something that we think um, is, is coming along in the state of Vermont. There are, last I checked, there were 14 green tariffs nationwide. I think there's a few more than that now. But a green tariff, uh, again, in a regulated utility state like Vermont, um, uh, only renewable energy market. Um, Olivia touched on this as well, and I can't stress it enough, that's why I put it in bold. Energy storage is the gateway, is the, we, we need to deploy much more energy storage so as to be able to deploy more solar. Um, we, we have essentially crushed the peak, the daytime peak, and we've shifted that peak to the nighttime. So um, absent some better way to manage the distribution profile of solar and um, I guess also wind, um, you know, we need large sources of energy storage. Uh, so you're gonna start to see a number of larger utility scale, <clears throat> generally battery storage projects be deployed uh, 
over the next couple of years as a means of sort of uh, evening out that distribution profile and uh, being able to 100 kilowatts per customer. That's a real impediment for a lot of municipalities. Um, you know, the, the bigger municipalities like South Burlington and Milton and um, Rutland, I mean, Rattleboro, Benning, and all of them are tapped out. All of them are tapped out. Cannot do any additional net meter. We're not escalating at point one, and then it goes off a cliff down to 10% in 2022. So that's right around the corner. Um, so I think that, you know, that's definitely a challenge. Um, you know, we, we talk about uh, and I'm changing legislation and PUC rules. I mean, this is a very dynamic um, and, and fast-moving industry. Um, you know, I, we talk about renewable energy. Well, it's to put a community that really seeks to address those objectives at the lowest price point possible for, you know, the best deal possible for the, for the municipality. So I think that's... Um, it's just something to think about. Um, so, and then I guess um, this is, I think, my final slide here. Um, I, I just wanted to touch on sort of, you know, laying the foundation for future success and doing the work that we're all here interested in talking about and doing, and we know that we need to do, and we need to do it way faster and way more aggressively than we have. I think it really does come down to legislative and community engagement, and you know, energy committees such as the folks that are here today, um, you know, motivated citizens, those are the best messengers that we can have out there in the community, in the state house, really talking to neighbors and, and legislators and other leaders. Um, really, it's helpful to have voices from the general population out there really helping us get the message out. And whether that is doing work with some of the environmental lobbying groups that are listed here, whether that is supporting the local energy committees and serving as project champions in your communities, um, or whether that is actually just going to Montpelier and testifying in front of one of the committees. Good morning. It's Chris Lamonia from Aegis Group. There are a number of projects going on. Uh, Aegis Renewables is working on a wind project, and they talked to the town about that. Uh, the town and the select board were at first a little uh, not sure about how to go, and then decided they'd like to do something. But uh, being a partner on or an off taker on the wind turbine was not what they planned. Was being used for recreation. They really weren't any ways to squeeze in the significant project there that would be cost effective. There are two other sites that we looked at. Uh, uh, the town has a 15-year municipal lease. We didn't have to go out to bond. At the end of that 15-year lease, the town is going to receive 100% of the benefits, and we're talking about it internally to look for the right timing and the uh, right way to proceed. And I, I think we do want the third site to be a, more of a showcase. The first site is well out of the way, really is visible to the public. Second side is a, a little bit more visible, but um, that's uh, ground mounted solar arrays that's not very attractive. The third site we have talked about solar canopy uh, at perhaps a recreation facility or putting solar on pavilion roofs. Uh, so there's still a lot of planning there. Uh, but part of the reason it took so long is Aaron really wanted uh, our solar projects to 
be something valuable to the community, not just for renewable energy, but uh, so that the taxpayers could see it as not, not necessarily revenue generating. A small town such as Richmond, Richmond has no land. They can't build one. Uh, anything of any size, uh, there's all, all the other entities in Richmond. Some other stuff. They already have their own power purchase agreement. Richmond struggled for a long time to try to figure out uh, what, what to do, and they decided to be a part Keep at it, you know, Colchester's success is, is proof that if you really want something like that, you can find a way to get it done. It may take time. Uh, our agents sign on to be the developer of our current two arrays. We spent considerable time with them educating ourselves as to how we do it. So find a good partner, get educated, uh, and find out what's right for you. Well, we'll open the question for any of the uh, any of the presenters, okay? So first, I just want to offer. Um, whoever has done some great things with solar over the last few years, we, we were above the cap before there was a cap, and we most recently um, installed five projects. Since we hired what was Vermont's first, and I believe still the only full-time energy coordinator in the municipality, so we have that resource available. He's willing and able to help through his experience with recent projects, including the most recent one that has begun construction now, which they, I believe, Vermont's first municipal partnership with a net metering group, so we have the mobile home park co-located with a, a water pumping station where a solar project is being put in, we're sharing some of those credits with the low-income folks in that mobile home park, so it's a bit of an experiment for the town, uh, but it's a unique project that I wanted to share that, that other people might think of ways, another, another unique way to maybe bring some of this technology to the municipalities. And um, the question I have, because we're over the cap, is you, know, um, uh, you mentioned the uh, unbundling. I like that terminology I've been talking about, that concept. Didn't have a nice way to put it, but unbundling of bills. And I had been talking about it in theory with people since <coughs> the cap came into place, and I didn't know if there was anyone who had executed in practice in unbundling of their bills to get more net metering. Um, I I would have to look into that, but uh, that's the right um, right now, and so because it's the whole district, regardless of where the project is or the school buildings are, is considered one customer for that cap. But with town, you know, you say I want, you know, I, I you know, it may be that your wastewater treatment plant is billed separately from um, the town hall or the fire hall. Just look at that in more detail. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Ralph Lander, Green Lantern. I have a question for, for Jeff Levin. Did um, approval of the municipal lease and the, the maybe route to ownership decision uh, go before town meeting in Colchester, or was that something that the select board felt comfortable uh, deciding by themselves? The select board decided that on their own. I don't know how much the project was discussed at town meeting, but it was not the, that specific part of it was not put before the voters. The net meter electricity credits? Am uh, I crazy? Probably it's 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 illegal, illegal routes? I, I don't know. I, I'm just wondering. So nobody, nobody figured out a way yeah. to get around the cap in no, such I an mean, innovative way. Yeah, no. it's possible for you to um, go, if it's possible for you to go to your utility and say, we would like to do solar, we have this site, we have this project, and you can negotiate um, a, a power purchase agreement with the utility directly. Right. Um, it's pretty difficult for um, a town government to do that on their own. So uh, that's why we say work with a partner because we could have a model where you are working with a partner and and they, and sometimes 
uh, that's possible. Um, so that is a mechanism, but I think there are some conversations with individuals and Green Mountain Power, but um, that uh, affects the finances and affects the feasibility of the project sometimes. But that's not, uh, that, would, that would be the legal route that you would have to go right, under that, that circumstance. Yeah, I get that. Under the current law. And then back, and then. Um, my first thing is, I, you know, I think what, again, what you need as a developer to sort of understand who's got the best technology out there and who's got it at the best price point and who's warrantying it to the greatest degree and can. Right, as long as that store yeah. knows where it comes from. Yeah. I mean, you can charge those batteries from the grid. Yeah. There's, if you're going to do yeah. solar at the same time as storage, there are some limitations. You can get the ITC. There, right. Yeah, you can get the investment tax credit on battery provided you charge with the solar right. array to a certain percentage. Yeah, we do have about a dozen companies, though, at more than a dozen companies that now can do microgrid and solar plus storage projects. Um, and probably, I think, in January, we're going to be updating that renewable energy business listing to include energy storage. Um, uh, many of the existing solar customers, uh, solar companies offer it, and there's your choices of different battery types and details. So um, it definitely here and um, and available as a choice, and it's only going to get better. And when you say microgrid, can you just define that? I'm sorry to jump in. So a microgrid is when, so remember how I talked about ISO New England and the regional grid, so we know the power wires that you see. So it cre a microgrid is you're able to go off grid. Like you can, I, I thought that was very, uh, I frequently find people don't want to see it. And so I was kind of curious if you could comment to the town, is this a community? You want your townspeople to be able to see it or? Was there, is yeah, there so general good right. acceptance from the community? Uh, Colchester is, uh, I, don't, I don't know that politically diverse is a good term because <laughs> we, we really think of it as being binary, but it certainly uh, has a more even mix of conservative and liberal voters. We go back and look at the park again. Uh, but that, that issue is still there, although I think people might be looking at it differently, which is... Uh, it, um, the, so for a homeowner, if you, you know, depending on what your needs are, I mean, the technology is here. We have companies in Vermont that are actually manufacturing these products. There's three of them. Um, uh, and, and so the technology is here. The prices are going to... So you mentioned that you have something like 80 some odd members that are vendors, essentially. Yeah. And of those, roughly 40 uh, deal with the municipalities. Of that, Catamount was one of the and and what and Suncatch. Well, Suncatch was the municipal. The Catamount was the original. Um, For speakers, thank you. Thank you. Please come up and ask me individually.